Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we talked about the ADFA problem before. Now let's move up a level to the A sub NFA problem. So remember that the A here stands for the acceptance problem, and here it's about NFAs. So it's a very similar setup. So we have a machine in an input, but now the machine is an NFA, and W is in the language of N. So we can't just use the same idea as before, just simulate the machine on that input because we have different choices here. And we need to have a deterministic Turing machine uh, accept this. We could use a non-deterministic machine, but I, I want you to think about this in a slightly different way with a deterministic machine. Yeah, we could use a non-deterministic machine and just convert it to a deterministic one. I mean, that's not really complicated. Uh, I mean, it is complicated, but it is possible to do. What I want you to think about is, let's try to do this directly on a, uh, on a deterministic Turing machine. So what we want to do is, well, we solved the ADFA problem already. So that problem is decidable. Can we use that in some way so we don't have to redo all the work that we did to solve it before? This is kind of like when you write a function in programming, you don't redo the code that you already did before, you just call the function, which it does exactly what you already did before. So this is the idea I want you to think about, is to show that this is decidable because A sub DFA is decidable. And the way that we'll do this is, again, with a high-level uh, description. So again, we'll have on input. So we're just describing a high level algorithm here. On input MW, where M is an NFA this time, and W is string. Okay, so now what are we going to do here? Well, what we can do is we can just convert the NFA to a DFA. So convert M into an equivalent oops equivalent DFA let's call it D and what I want to do here is we solve the ADFA problem now let's use this um, this DFA here against this input if it's equivalent then the answer of whether M and D accepts W is exactly the same because they accept the same language. And we know that this takes a finite amount of time because we can just list all two to the N possible subsets of states using the power set construction and uh, fill out the transition table just like we would normally do. Um, or we can do the build your states method, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do here is run the decider for uh, A sub DFA on, well, and I need to say the decider here because ADFA is a language. I can't run ADFA on something because it's just a language. I need to run the machine for this on some input. Well, well I need to provide it a string, and I'm going to provide it a machine and an input. So I need to provide it a DFA because that's what DFA says here, and the input for it. And it's pretty clear it's going to be D, the DFA we just made, and the input string uh, because we want to answer the same thing as whether the NFA accepted the input or not. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer, for the NFA question, I'm going to answer the same as what the decider for A sub DFA said. So do exactly the same thing as whatever a, the decider for A DFA says, whatever it did, just uh, do the exact same thing. And the way to actually implement that is we could rewire the, the accept state of the decider for ADFA, whatever its accept state is and whatever its reject state is, we can funnel those to our own accept and reject states 
the one for the machine that we're building for this. So this clearly runs in a finite amount of time because this step <laughs> takes a finite amount of time. These two take a finite amount of time because uh, it's a decider. Step two involves a decider, so it always halts. It takes a finite amount of time. And three clearly takes a finite amount of time. So overall, it takes a finite amount of time. And so A sub n of A is decidable. Okay. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could make this a lot faster. So I'll just make a note here. This first step is the one that takes the longest because this will uh, take a big O of 2 to the n time, let's say. And where n is the number of states in the NFA. And uh, the second step will take O of m time, where m is the length of the input string. So they're not really comparable necessarily, but 2 to the n looks way worse than the length of the input. So this is linear in the size of the input, right? So it's just going through the string once, um, or a constant number of times. It's just a constant times the length of the string. Here it's exponential in the size of the input DFA. So how can we make this faster? So how can we make this faster? It's not really required for this, but it's just a good thought experiment. Um, the way to actually make this faster is to uh, keep track of all states the NFA could be in at each point. So this is exactly the idea behind um, behind uh, the build your states as you go method, the one that we built the DFA for and we excluded a lot of states because they just weren't possible, they weren't reachable in when we were converting it. So uh, sometimes that th some of those states are just not possible, but even if all of them are possible, we're only in one of them at a time in the DFA that we're making. So why don't we just keep track of the states themselves because I don't need to keep track of anything else. I just need to know what states the NFA is currently possible to be in. And then what we need to do is just uh, update those states as necessary using the build your states as you go method, which is just look at the transition function from every one of the states I'm currently in and union them all together. And that's pretty easy to do. I'll let you actually think about how to actually do that in practice. Or, or how to actually implement that. But this is going to be a linear amount of work for each character. So it's going to be uh, O of N work per input character. And why is that? Because I may possibly have to write down all of the states at a given moment. That's entirely possible. So where N here is the number of states, by the way. So I, need to, I might need to write down all of those, but that's all I need to do. I, uh, I may have to scan across the tape several times. So it is a constant amount of work, but it's still a constant. Um, so overall, then, what we can say, this will take uh, O of N times M work or steps or whatever. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, because n is the number of states, because that's the amount of work per character, and there are m characters. Okay, so uh, this shows actually something that's pretty important, which we'll get to in the complexity uh, lectures at, at some point. But the important thing is that a sub nfa is actually decidable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your comments or questions about a sub nfa down in the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so if you want to jump in on that, my email is in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.